In today's session, we're talking about you being at your best every single time. Race Drivers, it's Enzo Mucci with the Race Driver Coach Show. And yeah, I want you to be at your best every single time. One of the, the main things that's going to help you succeed is a C word, consistency. Now, consistency to a race driver is kind of like, OK, if I can do a, a one minute dead lap time, I just got to do that as often as I possibly can. And if I can do 10 in a row, then I'm consistent, which is kind of right. Yeah, not, not too bad. But when we're talking about consistency on a global scale, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you approaching your racing in a way that is the same every time. And that same is pretty much you being at your best all the time, not having too many off days. Because I tell you what, if you, well, let's just go back to the car analogy I've used before, right? Or the AI. The car analogy is, if you look at a race car, a formula car, at the back, you got the gearbox. Now that gearbox, you put it in fresh. And you as a mechanic, as a driver, as a team owner, look at that gearbox and you say, Right, there you go. You got a fresh, brand new even gearbox. It will work every time. It will be at its best. No problem. Here we go. It's fixed, whatever it was before. And it's the same with the engine. As soon as they put an engine in that's fresh, it's new, it's been on the dyno, there it is. That won't miss a heartbeat now. It won't miss a beat. It'll be perfect. Every time you put the throttle on, it'll be there. Every time you come off the throttle, it'll cut the power and it's going to be at the best. You've got a whole new drivetrain now. Let's go for it, which is Completely right. And you expect it to, right? You expect that thing, that engine and that gearbox to work perfectly every time, especially when it's new. Then you go a little bit more forward in the car, in the cockpit, and you've got the driver, the human being that's in control of all this machinery. Every little input is done by the steering wheel, the pedals, gearbox. It's down to the human being. The problem is, it's that human being that's one of the most inconsistent unless you're running some of the modern day tires inconsistent part of the race car because some days they'll perform some sessions they'll perform out of their skin you're like wow that was amazing and then an hour later they're underperforming they've had something distract them their confidence has taken a hit their self-belief isn't there they're, the moment of the actual session you know it could be the the final has has beat them mentally so they can no longer drive like they were an hour ago what good is that? Let me just ask you to start with. If you've got a driver that's hit and miss, that's super quick, but can really only do it 70% of the time, and the other 30%, they're making huge mistakes, they're getting angry, they're making moves that are causing crashes, that kind of driver is not really good to anyone. So consistency, being the lifeline of your career, is something I want you to spend a lot of time on. And you bring it down, obviously, you strip, strip consistency back to being. I want to be at my best every single time, and I want to make sure I'm hitting my best. I'm not allowing myself to become distracted or allow the, the moment, the situation that I'm in to, to rule me and make me feel pressure. I'm the one in control, and I'm going to make it my responsibility to perform at my highest level, at my best, every single time. And that's how much you pretty much judge the session that's just happened. How was I at that point? Did I perform? Did I show up? Was I at my best? If not, why? And I better make sure I am next time I hit the track. This kind of devotion and pressure, if you like, that you put on yourself to perform needs to be focused on a lot nowadays. Because pretty much, you know, you go to the you go to a racetrack, into a into a race event, sorry, and the drivers are fairly similar. There's not a lot different. They can all do a very fairly similar time, a lap time. You've got like the top 20 in one, within one second. And if it's in a race where the tires are all starting to wear, then you can see the lap times get very close because there's only so much grip you can use. Everyone gets to that level. So there's not a lot of difference between the drivers. But there is a difference between them putting their sectors together. There is a difference between all the drivers being at their best immediately on the first lap. There's a difference between how drivers handle the pressure of somebody behind putting them under pressure. Do they crack or do they concentrate more? 
Have they got good race craft? So then you get into all these other things, but a lot of it is revolved around how can that individual, each individual that's on track, perform when the pressure's on? And can they perform similar? Can they reach their skill set, the top of their skill set, every time they're in that car? Very often the answer is no. They will do a couple of laps that are pretty consistent, maybe five laps in a row, then all of a sudden something to break the concentration, and it takes them about four laps to get back into the rhythm again. I want you, over the next season, over your next lifetime actually, but over this season, to really put the magnifying glass on that area because there's a lot of missed potential there. You can do this lap time, but you're not because of this reason. There's, that is every single, every single qualifying that we go to, you can hear most of the drivers saying, oh yeah, if I just didn't make a mistake at turn two, and if I didn't get that bit of headwind going into turn four, I wouldn't have lost two tenths there and one tenth there, and they add in it all together. And before you know it, oh look, I'm only two tenths off. No, 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 you're a second off. Let's get real. You underperformed. You didn't do it. And most, and you think that pole guy, the pole position guy did the perfect lap? I doubt it very much. They too were saying, oh, if only I didn't make that mistake at turn 11, they'll have things that they could have gone better. So it's really that it's every single race weekend, which is the sporting side, which is fine. But every single race weekend, you can see all these missed opportunities. Drivers that are qualifying in positions that are beneath them. They could have done a lot better but they're not putting enough pressure, enough focus on that truth. Instead, they'll blame something, something going in the way and they'll just forget about it. It's coach's job to bring that driver back in to look and say, no, 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 you could have done this. What was going on? What was your mindset? Why were you overdriving? What was you worried about? And address it. That's what we want to speak about today, really. Because you're missing too many things. And this can be the same on a simulator. It can be trained on a simulator. If you find out your lap times up and down, up and down, like a heartbeat, as you see the graph, then that's you, what you've got to work on. I want you to become seriously robotic when you're in that car. I can reach this level. I am an eight out of 10 driver. Then I'm going to do eight out of 10 performance every single time. And if I don't, I'm going to have a look, understand why, and make sure I fix it for next time on the track. Now, the questions that really I get that, on this area, you get questions like, I can perform in the heats, but I can't in the final. And then opposite, I can perform in the final, but I can't in the heats. Or when it comes to qualifying, I crumble. Uh, I feel sick every time before I go on track. I don't feel like, you know, my nerves just get the better of me. So then when I'm out there, I can't really perform in the first few laps. It takes time for me to calm down. So you can see that it goes on a lot. And I'd say this is 50% of the drivers. I, <laughs> have got this in bucketfuls, this problem, I would say 90% of drivers, maybe 95% of drivers have got this problem at least once every other race weekend. It's a lot because it comes down to you as a human individual, as a human being of how you perform and how you show up. And we get, we're asking the body and the brain and your whole being to do something that is quite exposed. You know, you're racing a car, you've got people watching, uh, you've got lots of beef with certain drivers. Um, there's, there's a lot. It's loaded. And then you're expected to perform. So I get it. I know. I know what it's like. I used to be so nervous when I was first started racing. So nervous. But when I, used, when I brought it down and I changed the way I did this, I changed the way I saw what I was going into and it changed it immediately. But also I was more fearful of losing, I think, and looking stupid in front of others. And that's where a lot of the pressure's brought in. That's where it's self-created. And we make this race we're going into so scary for no reason. And we do it a few times, quite a few times, and then it becomes an automatic reaction to when as soon as you're putting the belts on or you're getting ready. But just on the nerve side of it, just understand that nerves are completely normal. If you didn't have them, well, what's the point in doing it? It's quite boring. I'm just going into a race. It's not the same. You need that buzz. It's just like when you're going into a fight. When you're at school and you went for a fight, you were crapping yourself. Even if you think you could beat him, it was still like, oh, man, there's a lot of people circled around here that I've got to step into. But that is really your mind saying, okay, something's happening. I've got to get prepared for it. That's it. 
It's not saying something's happen happening. I've got to get prepared for it. And I'm freaking the hell out here. Your brain gets nervous when it starts to see something that's a challenge that exposes it a little bit. I want you to get super excited in them moments because that means you're alive. If you're doing stuff in life on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, that gets you scared. Do you know how many people over like 40, 50, 60 would kill for that again? Because their lives are so damn boring now. But you're in there. You're doing something, which is kind of commendable, right? You're racing a car. That is exhilarating. It's you being on the edge. It's you dicing with death, if you like. Being out there, wheel to wheel, fighting with others. Man, there's no wonder you're nervous. But it's when you let the nerves tip over into affecting your muscles and they won't even turn the wheel like they should. That's when it's a problem. So just a very, I want to just run you through a very quick technique that, uh, yeah, I used and I use for the drivers and it works in all sorts of different sports. It works basically when you want to change a habit and a, and a behavior that you've got and you really want to change it because you know it's, it's hurting your career and having nerves and not competing in certain sessions, but in others is no different. So I want you to take every session the same approach. It's you, to put it bluntly, it's you going into this session, going on the track with exactly the same mindset that you have primed and you execute. And that's it. You stay dumb as hell. I'm just going onto the track and I'm going to drive. You just stay dumb and you stay very focused on what I've got to do. What's the first thing I've got to do? Get out there, warm the tires up. Be aggressive. Make sure the mind is sharp now as well. I can feel my muscles working. And when you're out there pushing the car or the car to warming it up and your breath, you know, you're actually getting out of breath because you're warming the car up that much and you're stamping on the brake, getting that thing all nice and hot. That is to warm the car up, but it's also to warm your mind up. You're there knowing that every time you do this with your muscles, you're starting to wake things up. OK, so get yourself first warmed up and you're focusing on the car warming up, getting me into mode. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure turn one, I break at the 100 meter board and I'm going to look into the corner early, rotate and go. It's all about the exit. Just an example. This is how you approach a session when you are 100 percent focused on the process, on what's got to be done. If you allow your mind to then focus outside of it and go, okay, it's a big arena. If I lose, I'm screwed. If everyone sees me lose here, they're not going to have respect for me. What's my dad going to think? If you start loading all these things on top of you driving, you will not be able to turn the wheel. You won't be able to feel loose. You'll be warming up. And as soon as it goes a bit risky that you might lose the car, you'll back off. And, uh, and then you're in a completely different defense mindset. You don't want to be in that mindset when you're a race driver. Race drivers are like firefighters. They're like heroic. However, if you start to plant seeds in a race driver's head about people might judge you and what will people say, they crumble like everybody else. So don't even let yourself go there. You stay focused on what needs to be done. The brain is there looking down upon you, waiting for a command. And you're giving it the commands. You're giving it what it needs to feed off. And then emotions are then brought from them. So if you're feeding it, all i got to do is warm the tires up. Let's be aggressive. Then you're thinking turn one, what am I going to do? It's going to look at that. But if you start focusing on things like what if I fail? What if that per well, I can't believe that person's going to beat me now and oh, my lap time's this, then the brain's going to focus on that. You are in control of what you focus on and you've got to take control of it. So back to the strategy. You won't change anything about you, whether it's a habit and emotions that come up all the time. You won't change these things unless you have the motivation to change it. So if you come to me or to anyone else and you say, right, I'm not very good on the first few laps. It'd be great to change it. Yeah, it would. So let's uh, talk about strategies. You'd be like, yeah, OK, I'll give it a go. It can't be half asked. If you're serious about your career, about succeeding, then taking the, the mental side of it has to be 
put so much in priority. It's paramount importance, honestly. So you've got to have the motivation to change. You've got to really understand and fully digest that if I don't change, I am screwed. If I am one of these one in 80 people, 80% that are not really achieving much because of their mindset, I'm never going to make it. And you've got to be really honest with yourself because it is the truth, isn't it? If I don't show up, I have this ability, but I don't show up on a consistent basis, I am screwed. And I want you to play that out all the time. You see what that means in two and three and five years. If you carry on just being inconsistent, just kind of doing well, not really being really good in high pressure situations, you are not going anywhere. And I want you to sit with that and really digest it because without the need to change, you won't. Any habit that you've got and you've, and you've built that habit over the last few years or last few decades, it's only going to be broken with motivation to start with, the motivation to change. If you just kind of want to change, it'd be nice to change, you won't. It's up to you to make it painful. If I carry on doing this, this is what my life's going to look like. It's like Scrooge. Didn't change until he saw past, present, future. That's what I want you to do. And I explain that massively in the warrior's mind, by the way. It's huge. It's the start of the book, really. That's where you, uh, and I don't want to talk about books, not self-promotion, but it's just that's how important it is. That's why I put it down on paper. You have to look at your timeline and see how you have been over the last five years. And you start to then decode that and understand why you're in the present situation that you're not happy with. If you want to change, you've got to change. But you need the motivation to do that. Two or three reasons why I must absolutely change for the better. What's it going to give me? Good things to pull me towards it. And what are the things that I must, I'm going to avoid if I change and get very clear on them? Second thing is the strategy itself. When you're going in, which we already said, take care of your body. If you want to be motivated, if you want confidence, then your body has to say confidence from the outside. If someone takes a look at you just for one second and they can see that person's confident, then you've done it. So if you do, do need to be confident in anything in life, it's chest out a little bit, head up a little bit, a bit of a smile on your face, raise your voice. Just the tonality of your voice and a slight shift in the way you're holding your body, your brain again is taking it in and going, ah, oh, this person wants confidence. Here you go, sir or lady. And it will give you a sprinkling of confidence. So every time you want to change an emotion, when you're going into a session, any session, and you're saying, okay, I want to be in control here, which I want you to be doing every single time, you make sure that your body looks like it's in control. It is sat in the seat nice and strong. It's alert. It's ready. It's confident. The biggest emotion around when you're a race driver. If you're driving with lack of confidence, it's amazing how the car takes control. It feels awful. Before you know it, you're slipping down the field. But if you're confident, if you feel like you're bigger than the actual car itself or the cart itself and you're sat in it, it's amazing what that does. You take control. Your arms are just that little bit firmer on the steering wheel and you're the one that tells it where to go. But I don't, that's not going to be automatic. You've got to create this. You've got to sit in that cart and then bring the physiology or the car, bring the physiology up. Even though you're strapped in, you're stronger than the belts. You are owning that car. It starts with the body first. And then the focus. This is still part of the strategy of you getting into the mode. The focus is what am I going to do next? And you keep your mind on now and next. You completely destroy the, what's happened in the past. I made a mistake. Now, what am I going to do about it? Next, next corner. Next has got to be one of those. The, it's only four letters long, that word. But I think it's one of the most powerful mental techniques that I can ever give somebody. It's as soon as you've had a mistake, next. As soon as you've done a good corner or a good lap, good lap, Next, you keep the mind focused on what's coming up at like 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers an hour, and you keep it there. If it gets distracted, starts to look behind. Next, break that pattern. What you focus on is what you get. So if you've got a strong body going into a session and you maintain that as you're driving, feeling confident, and you're telling the brain what to focus on next, not 
this situation is big. I've got somebody behind me. It's the last lap. I can't believe it. They're going to attack me. No, next. I'm going to execute the next corner. And it's amazing how emotions are put, kept in check then. Because somebody can hit you off the track. You can lose five spots. But instead of getting frustrated and angry, all of a sudden you shout next. And you look at what you wanted to do. It's amazing how quick you get on with it. And before you know it, you're back in the rhythm again. So going in, if you're the kind of person, like I say, that's struggling with different levels of performance over different sessions and different types of uh, situations, this is what to do. First of all, notice it. Get the motivation to change it because it is going to destroy your career. If you're like this, up and down, that's no good to anyone. You want to be super consistent, but you need to get the motivation to do that in the first place. To change a habit, you need motivation which means reason, a reason to change, a reason to improve. And then going into this boardroom, even anything, if you want to be confident, what you do with your body, you make it look confident. And you, what do you say to your head next? What's next? I'm going to go and talk to these people. I'm going to go deliver what I can do for their company or find out what their company wants and see if it's a match. Done. Curiosity then is the, is the emotion, is the feeling. Not nerves. I mean, nerves are always there because something's coming. It's like, great, this is it. This is my sig signal now. When, as soon as I get nervous, that's when I switch on. Nerves come in. I change the body. I tell it what to focus on next, on the process, not the goal. I don't want you to say, I want to go and win this race. I want to go and do this. No. What have you got to do to win this race? Okay, I need to warm the tires up. I've got to get a good start. I've got to make sure I dominate the first two laps. And then I'm just going to focus on one corner at a time. That's a strategy. You telling the brain that will calm it down, give it something to focus on. And then you might win the race. Same with anything else, board meetings, the whole lot. If you're really focused on a result that matters a lot to you, you'll get nervous and you won't be quite in the rhythm. But you want to get lost in the art of whatever it is that you're doing, whether you're snowboarding down a mountain or racing a car, your body and your mind have got to be aligned with exactly what it's doing. Not what, it, what the results are, not what people are thinking, what it's actually in front of it right now. And this is something, again, you get to the end of the session, you do your debrief with your mechanic, your dad, your engineer, whoever it is, your coach, and then you spend a little bit of time saying, right, how was I? What was my performance like? Did I hit my absolute ceiling? Or did I let nerves get to me? Did I underperform? Did I worry about something? Whatever it is, you write it down. Right, next session, I'm going to make sure that I overcome this. I'm going to make sure that I don't do this. And again, motivation, if I carry on doing this, I'm going to screw up the weekend. I better change. What am I going to do? I'm going to get in. I'm going to warm that car up really aggressively so it gets the body all activated. And I'm going to be do a bit of research on the corner. I don't know as well. Some teammate was quicker. And you keep it there on the process. Stay away from results. Stay away from what other people think. Stay away from history. It's just process. Focus the mind on that and have the body that looks like the emotions that you want. So every time you go into a session, it's your responsibility to create the mindset that you want, that you need. Body first. Get the body there. Focus on where it needs to focus. Rinse and repeat until you get your own little strategy and you go, you know what, Enzo, for me, what works is I listen to classical music, nice deep breaths, I smile, and I think of two things that I'm grateful for, and then I go on the track. If that works for you, do it. Because when you're grateful, it's virtually impossible to be stressed. It's virtually impossible to really be overly nervous, to be fair, because you're grateful of the situation. Wow, this is amazing. I can't wait to get on the track. I can't, I believe I'm in a car. I can't believe this is happening. So many people that would kill for what I've got. Just thinking that when you're nervous, if that's your strategy for going into a battle, perfect. That brings you aligned with it. So then you can let yourself go, do it. But you've got to find yours. It could be skipping. It could be visualizing a lap. It could be a little bit more energetic. Like you listen to rock music or anything, rap, something, you know, really high intense uh, drum and bass something like that whatever as long as you don't tip yourself over the edge but you're the kind of person you say you know what ends i need waking up 
because I'm too laid back. Fine, buzz yourself up and then get in the car. But you must make this a priority. Your performance, again, is based around your consistency. And your consistency is how you can perform at your best every time. It's a big subject. It's something I'll talk a lot about. It's something I spend most of my career on, to be fair. But I love talking about it. Now, I've covered a wide range and just flew through it. But if you have questions on this area, please type them below and I'll do more videos on it, more specific ones with techniques and things. But I just wanted to do this now to get it off my chest, to make sure you're addressing it and you're not missing out on one of the most important parts of your racing. Thanks and see you next time.